Well, we're here with the uh, Small Boat Restoration, our 1965 Alcourt uh, Sunfish named Wave. Had some questions come up about uh, nomenclature and what different things on a sunfish are called. A lot of uh, sailing terminology and uh, small boat nomenclature. So we'll start off and we'll just kind of go through things in a random order. Try to go bow to stern, but some of the, the rig of the boat. So we'll start with that. It's a this triangle sail is called a lateen sail. So that's the type of uh, rig she has. And folks uh, new to sailing, you may know you may know port and starboard. You may know bow and stern, but if you don't, this uh, pointy end of the boat is called the bow, and the aft end of the boat is called the stern. Up here, this uh, this is what we call a here's our our bow handle, and we've tied a little line on there to be a bow line, and the knot we've used to tie it is called a bowline, spelled the same way. So we've got a bowline on our bow line. Now we told you, started off, we're gonna throw in a few trivia bits here as we go through, that this was a 1965 sunfish. And you folks that know a little bit more about them might go, there were no stripes on a 1965 and you'd be correct. We took some liberties. We added the double stripes that came along with the 1968 and we also, Captain Jack put them on the stern too, because that's how he liked it. And if somebody doesn't like it, then well, they don't get to go. So back to your rig here. I found out a few years ago that all the, all the pieces of metal and wood that work to control the sail are called spars. So sometimes people will refer to these as uh, spars and refer to this other uh, bigger pole that's 10 feet long as the mast and you can call it that if you want you can come out call them all spars if you want some folks refer to this and so that's the cool thing about sailing there's different names for the same thing <laughs> so you can call this a, a gaff or i believe in some sunfish literature it's referred to as the upper boom and this piece right here upper boom and the other piece on the bottom as the lower boom why do they call it a boom, you might ask? Well, they call it, call it a boom because if you're not watching when you're tacking and the sail goes back and forth and hits you in the head, then that's the noise that it makes. So back up around to this other side, this lower, this lower boom or spar, it's held onto the, it's connected to the mast with this bronze uh, gooseneck. This one's got a little bit different screw then you might see they put someone's put in a stainless screw versus the bronze it's going to be easier to remove with this hex head on it so it uh, attaches there and then it comes around there's a swivel there inner ring goes through the mast goes through the inner ring down into the mast step when you rig the boat you're going to tie this line here there's only really three lines well let's see there could be one two three four five lines on a sunfish we talked about the bow line which you don't have to have we like it just because it looks nautical but the one line you do need is this halyard it goes up and it's wrapped around the uh, gaff or the upper boom it comes through a little hole in the top of the mast cap comes back down on the starboard side or the right side of the boat down to a halyard block. You might say that looks like a pulley. Well, it is, but when you put it on a boat, it's called a block. And then it goes back to this little object here, which is called a cleat. And your halyard gets cleated off there, and we like to store the extra halyard that's left over by just tucking it under there. Next, we come back to this fiberglass piece here. It's wood on a wooden boat. Early days, there's engineering drawings from Alcourt that called it a combing. In later years, they referred to it on their parts diagrams as a splash guard. Now, if your boat is night fiberglass, 1960 to 1972 ish, where you have a sailfish, you might have a metal serial number tag on the deck. After that, you're going to be looking for hole identification numbers 
on the stern, upper right stern on the transom. Or you may have a little metal sticker that's got a AMF number on it. So those are some ways you might determine the age of your boat. This is called your daggerboard trunk. It's where the your basically your keel that you can take in and out goes through to the bottom. That helps keep the boat tracking straight and helps you to tack, which is the word for turn. We've uh, upgraded the 1965 boat to a 1980s dagger board called a Barrington board. And if you were to capsize, which means to turn over, you want to make sure that little piece of board doesn't go floating away so you can tie it on with a retaining line which goes to a little eye strap that's how the early boats did it and later boats you may see a piece of bungee cord that runs up to either the mast or back to your where's the magic finger there it is magic finger up to your bow handle so we're working our way back the line that controls the sail is called a sheet and that's this line that's coiled up here it goes through a little swivel cam cleat is a upgrade we've done the early boats would have come with this open fair lead called a sheet hook you just run your line under there so that helps you double up on the pressure and relieve your arm for a little bit if you've been out sailing for a while line comes up from there runs to another pulley which if you're on a boat you have to call it a block Back along the bottom of the lower boom, uh, we've upgraded and put on these sheet hangers to keep the sheet from drooping down and catching your cap when you're sitting in the cockpit here and knocking your cap off. You don't want to lose your cap or else you have to sail with two caps. Back to another block and then it follows down to what the Alcourt and AMF called a, a bridle. This little piece of, uh, here's another piece of line you'll have on the boat. It's called your bridle. Some people will call it a traveler. You can win your uh, bet by uh, pulling out old literature to show them where it's called a bridle. Why do they call it a bridle? Well, because it helps keep your tiller from getting away from you. It's like, oh, did you just say tiller? Is that what that stick is called? Yes. This stick is called a tiller. That's what controls your rudder so there's two control surfaces on the boat one is mostly fixed most of the time called the dagger board that's down through the trunk you can change its position up or down depending on how deep the water is you lose effectiveness uh, when it comes up and your rudder is your other part back here yeah, let's see if we missed anything on the way back uh, that's the cockpit is where you sit on the, you sit on the edge, or you can even sit in it on a light wind day if you want. And uh, that's where you sail the boat, normally from that position, using your tiller. We've changed the tiller to make it longer, so Skipper can sit on the edge of the cockpit, and she can, when she's uh, doing something else, she can hook her knee over the edge of the tiller, tiller and sail with her leg while she's uh, fiddling around with something else. A lot of uh, the other boats you see, the tiller will come out to about here. It will end and then there'll be another piece attached to it, a tiller extension. It's either gonna be attached with a bolt where it only moves in one plane, or there may be a rubber joint called a universal that lets that tiller extension move in all different types of planes. You can sit way up here if you want, hike way back, out, way back off the boat and, uh, and work that tiller with your extension that's uh, you'll see the racers doing that Let's come on back these uh, 1960 to 1987 boats have a metal trim if it's got a rolled deck edge all fiberglass and there's some little non-skid molded in on the beam of the cockpit your boats uh, 1988 or newer if your boat has this style rudder with the springs it is a 1972 late 71 ish or newer what that does is it lets, lets the rudder pop up if you hit an object or when you're coming into the beach so it's not fixed down 
and you don't uh, break your rudder off. So you've got a uh, rudder. Here's where it gets fancy. You've got your rudder spring pin. You've got your rudder cheek. You've got your rudder springs. These are called tiller straps on either side of the tiller. And then you've got your tiller. And then you have your pintle and spring mechanism here. And that uh, holds the rudder assembly to the boat. It's attached to a gudgeon, this metal piece here. To uh, detach that, you'll see the, the little carved out area there. There's another little carved out area underneath the spring. So when you press that down, you can slide it off. And off comes your, you see, see how that will slide off, off comes your rudder. You pop it back up to the larger diameter portion of the pintle and your rudder's back on. Some boats, this whole assembly, the pintle and spring is reversed where you push up from the bottom. You can set it up either way you like it. And, uh, and we've seen boats set up both ways. So you've got all these items back here. These little ports are called uh, deck plates when you buy them, and then everyone calls them inspection port as soon as they're done buying them. This one was put on so that we could work inside the boat and put in a backer plate, because once again, we've upgraded a 1965 boat with the newer style rudder. If you have a boat that has a lot of bronze pieces on the back, a horizontal hinge plate, a latch plate on the bottom, a vertical hinge plate, a little uh, pin, and some uh, straps. Then you've got the 1971 going back as far as 1953. You've got what is called the old style rudder. So I think we've covered most of the pieces. Of what did I come up with? Five lines. So you've got, we'll go backwards. We've got your bridle and then we have your your sheet which controls your sail line number three is your dagger board retainer line or your bungee line four your halyard and then a bow line if you put it on there two piece of two pieces of wood which may be plastic on the newer boats called your dagger board and your rudder. Oop. Well, let me change three pieces of wood and your tiller. Those later boats are aluminum. You may see different tiller extensions that are made out of different uh, materials. Some, some are homemade, some are made at the factory. And then you get to sit at the bar and argue over whether this is a combing, a splash guard, or a thingy. So lateen rig set on aluminum spars. The, the great thing about this boat is from 1972 on, pretty much I can think of standing right here in the hot Florida sun and humidity and dew point, is that um, all the parts are interchangeable. This is a recreational sail. So you can sail around the world with this sail. They also... Uh, that's another upgrade for Wave. That's a 1984 Riviera style sail. If you're listening, Laser Performance, we wish y'all would make these again. It's probably one of the most beautiful sails we've come across. And then you have the racers who have fancy racing sails that have a little bit different cut. And they are reinforced. Oh, we can talk about this at the minute of the points of the sail and where they attach. So let's just go ahead and do that now. We'll start at the top. See if I get it all right. Y'all can critique me later. The head of the sail up at the top there is called the head. And they come down to this little grommet area there is called the tack. And then back to the attachment is called the clue. So head, tack, clue. This uh, leading edge of the sail here is called the luff. 
the bottom edge of the sail itself is called the foot and then the, the back edge the trailing edge is called the leech so we got head tack clue and then we've got your where are we going here this then the edges of the sail are called buff foot and leech now this little tag here we talked about racer says alcourt class approved sale made in canada so that's about right 1980s they're making sales at the folk loft in canada they also made a racing sale that had reinforced corners it had a little bit extra belly or a little bit extra draft cut into the bottom of the sail into the foot and into the luff and the leech was shaped just a little different a lot of reinforcing um uh, stitching and that became what they called the racing sail which is more expensive than a recreational sail can you race oh there she goes she's going sailing right now i guess we're talking about sailing and not out doing it so she wants to go so um your racing sail has the better cut has the reinforced uh uh, panels that it needs and that's what the serious racers use but if you were to in enter a class sanctioned event so a class racing you could sail with this sail it would not be the fastest sail out there but there's so many other variations on the boat you know this is not the fastest daggerboard out there this may not be the fastest rudder this is not the lightest boat out there, but you'll be within small percentages in all of those. So two perfectly matched sailors. Uh, this boat would not win, but if you have special skipper skills and you're a boat whisperer, then you would probably win on any boat that you went on, even if it's a 1953 uh, wooden sunfish. So that's her claim and uh, to challenge anyone to uh, contradict it. <laughs> so, we've also done something a little different on this sail. We have laced it on with 1 8 inch Dacron cord, just like they used to do old school. And nowadays you'll see a little plastic ring that looks kind of like a shower clip that goes around. It has to be uh, tied down at the, uh, the tack, it has to be attached so it doesn't slide back and then it's attached again back at the the head of the sail and back at the clue of the sail. So we used a, a marlin hitch. The line comes down, goes around through the grommet under the lower boom and then back inside of the line and back. And then we just tied a bunch of knots here. This is called an, an out haul, which hauls the sail out. It can be adjusted different tensions for different types of air. And so this is an outhaul cap. You can see how this sail does have a little bit of uh, extra fabric just kind of bunched up here. That is not wrong when the sail, when you get it under power, you get that extra pocket there to catch more wind and shape the wind. And don't be surprised when you're looking at pictures if you see this lower boom actually bend a little bit, take a little curve in it as that sail takes its shape. So we're gonna go uh, wrap things up now. If you've got any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. And like everybody else is saying nowadays, make sure you hit subscribe and click on the little bell to the next of it to uh, if you want notifications. But uh, again, I hope y'all are having a good time. Hope everyone's getting their boat ready for the season, put out the plug bell, bling, ding, ding, for our manual called the Sunfish Owner's Manual available on Amazon. And um, we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have and look forward to hearing about your boat and all your sailing adventures. So that's about it from now from Clark, Wave, and Skipper.